Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Dell XPS 179710. We looked at the prior version about a year ago, and the hardware from the outside is very similar, but inside they've made some performance improvements, so we're going to look at what this new one is all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Dell, so we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new laptop is all about. Now the price point on this starts at around $1,600 and quickly escalates up from there. This one is on the higher end of the configuration spectrum and costs around $3,000 give or take depending on sales and everything else that's going on. This is a premium laptop. You are paying for its looks and its build quality. You can get comparably performing computers for less money, but they're not as sleek as this one and they're not built as well as this one is. So it's up to you whether or not the build quality and appearance is important to you. If it is, this is definitely something to consider. Now this one has a 17 inch display. It is running at a 4K resolution, 3840 by 2400. It's in a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So you have more vertical real estate than what you would typically have with a regular 4K display. And I prefer this because it's nice to have a little bit more room for documents and web browsing and the sorts of things you do on a computer. So it's good to see more of these 16 by 10 displays working their way out there. Uh, this is the same display that was in last year's model. Now inside is where a lot of changes have occurred. So we've got an i7 11800H CPU. That's an 11th generation Intel chip running with eight cores. You have an NVIDIA RTX 3060 GPU, and that is a 70 watt unit. This one has 32 gigabytes of RAM. It is DDR4 3200 RAM, which is faster than what they put in last year's model. And this one has a one terabyte SSD. Now you can upgrade the RAM and the storage. There are two RAM slots on board, and there's also two NVMe slots for those SSDs. And this supports the new PCI Express 4.0 standard so you can get the newer, faster drives installed on this one down the road if you want. Our model did not come with one of those newer drives. Dell will let you configure this up to eight terabytes spread across two disks, so you can get a lot of capacity and a lot of performance out of some of the changes they made here on the motherboard. Now, because this is a 17-inch laptop, it will be rather big and heavy. This one weighs 5.34 pounds or 2.42 kilograms, and that's because it has a touch display on board. That adds a little bit of weight to the mix. If you don't opt for the touch display, it is 4.87 pounds or 2.21 kilograms. And one note on the display, we've got the 4K display, of course, but they also have a 1080p display that costs less. But I think that's a major step down in image quality at this size, especially how close you typically sit to a laptop. So I would suggest spending that little bit of extra money and going with the 4K display, and it's up to you whether or not the touch component is important. And it's very well put together, as most Dell XPS laptops are. You've got the trademark carbon fiber keyboard deck here that looks and feels really nice. I'm very happy with the keyboard as well. Nice big keys, well spaced. It's backlit. You've got your fingerprint reader here integrated. The keyboard travel isn't bad actually, not as deep as a ThinkPad, but I think provides a good amount of tactile response as you are typing. The speakers here sound great. There's actually some bass coming out of them, which is unusual for a laptop. Not subwoofer bass, but definitely more than what you typically experience. And I think that is helped by the fact that it is a large device and there's a lot more room for speakers and air movement. Now, the one disappointment I have here is with the trackpad. It doesn't track as well as I would like. It's um, sometimes losing track of my finger as I'm dragging things around. It's hard to get it to repeat itself, but it's something that I haven't been that crazy about. It's working fine, of course, right now in front of the camera, but there have been a few instances where I felt like the trackpad lost track of what I was intending to do. One thing I did do, though, was disable uh, tap to click, so it has to get pushed down in order for a click to register. That did improve things a bit, and I also made it so that you can click anywhere on the trackpad for a left click and push two fingers down 
for a right click and as you can see it's not always getting that right click here when I try to register it. So the trackpad feels off a bit to me and I've seen a few other reviews where they have acknowledged similar issues with it. The build is all metal, at least on the sides, bottom, and top here. It feels really nice. Uh, the balance on the weight is very nice too, so you can lift up the display here without the keyboard coming up with it. It's always a sign of a really nice design. And for ports here, we've got a lot of Thunderbolt ports. This one has Thunderbolt 4. Let's see if my camera can find them. There they are. Uh, so you have a Kensington lock over here. You've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left-hand side and another two on the right-hand side, along with a full-size SD card reader and a headphone jack. This does power itself over those Thunderbolt ports, but it uses a 130-watt power supply, which is kind of a Dell proprietary thing, I believe, uh, because most Thunderbolt power supplies max out at 100 watts. So if you are plugging this into a docking station, it's going to work, you'll get power delivered, but you might see a notification saying that it's not getting all the power it needs. So you might find yourself in a situation where the battery will drain even when the computer is plugged in, and that's because it needs more power than what most typical USB-C and Thunderbolt docks can provide. So you probably want to have it connected to the included power supply whenever you are at your desk. Now for battery life, if you stick to the basics like word processing and email, you can probably squeeze about eight to eight and a half hours out of the battery before you gotta plug everything in again. If you start using the GPU for gaming or video editing or some other high-end engineering task, your battery life, of course, will be significantly less. And you're also going to want to keep the display brightness down, especially if you've got this 500 nit 4K display because these things will definitely eat away at the batteries. There is, of course, a fan on board, so you'll want to keep those bottom vents there clear for airflow. And it's not all that loud, especially when you're sitting idle or just working on a document or browsing the web. If you start playing games or do things that start to hit that GPU, that's when the fan noise will kind of kick up and you'll definitely hear it. But it's not overly loud. It's certainly not as loud as a gaming laptop is. And I think they've done a good job kind of regulating when that fan needs to kick on. And I think for most work tasks, you're not going to hear it at all. And the webcam on this one is only 720p. I was hoping we'd start seeing more 1080p webcams on these new premium laptops, but not quite yet. The camera is up here at the top, though. They've kind of crammed it into the upper bezel, so perhaps that's about the best they can do given the size constraints they have to work with here. All right, let's take a look now at some performance items. We'll begin with our usual web browsing test, and we are on my Wi-Fi 6 network now. And as expected, this thing is super fast, and everything just kind of comes up almost immediately as you're browsing around the web. That's due, of course, to the processor and the networking here all in, you're not gonna have any problems getting your basic work done on this. And because you've got the GPU on board, you can do live video production, video editing, photo editing, pretty much any high-end task will be running quite nicely on the laptop here. Uh, YouTube here is working great at 4K60, so media playback should look very nice. We're not getting any significant drop frames here, even with a 4K60 video playing back. Because you have, though, a 16 by 10 display, let me get the stats out of the way here, you will have some letterboxing top and bottom on most of the media that you play, and that's because this 16 by 10 display is a little taller than the 16 by 9 displays that typically play back 1080p and 4K content. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 222 running on Google Chrome, and that puts this new i7 processor right in line with many other chips from this current generation. All right, let's take a look at some games now. Remember, we've got the RTX 3060 NVIDIA GPU on this. And what we did is we ran all of the games at the native display resolution of 3840 by 2400. Fortnite ran great on this. We were running at medium settings and were able to maintain a frame rate north of 60 frames per second. Most of the time it was in the 80 frames per second territory, so it looked and played great. We also ran Doom Eternal, and this one was running again at the native resolution. We set it to low settings, and we were in the 50 frames per second territory here. So this might be one game you'll want to turn down to a lower resolution to squeak out more frame rate or image quality, but it did 
played just fine. And we also ran The Witcher 3, which is an older game, but at the native resolution with ultra settings. And here we were between 35 and 40 frames per second most of the time. So this will be another one that would benefit from running at a lower resolution. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 6,962. That's a nice bump in performance over the prior edition of the XPS 17, as you can see on the chart there. But do make note of the Legion Slim 7 there at the top. It's running with the same GPU, and that machine is performing a little better because they have tuned that computer for gaming performance. This one is more of a work machine, so you will get better gaming performance out of what might likely be a less expensive gaming laptop, but again, you won't get the elegance that you're getting here with the XPS build quality. And if you're looking to get into virtual reality, this should work well with that. Newer titles, I would recommend that you run probably at their medium settings, but you should be able to get enough of a frame rate out of the GPU here to play around in virtual environments without too many issues. We also ran the 3D Mark stress test, which measures how well the computer does under heavy sustained load. And there we got a passing grade of 97.9%. And that tells me that this laptop won't have all that much thermal throttling and should be able to maintain its performance consistently over long periods of time. And a little bit earlier, we booted up Ubuntu 21.04 to see how well it handled Linux. And it was able to detect most of the hardware. That included the display, the touch panel, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth. But what didn't work was the audio. It just did not detect the audio hardware built into the laptop. So that might require additional tinkering to get working, but everything else on the Linux side did seem to work pretty well. So overall, this is a nice improvement over last year's XPS 17. Most of the hardware looks and feels the same, but inside they made some nice noticeable improvements in performance, and that's always a welcome addition. So this is a nice revision on an already nice computer. And there are not many large premium 17 inch laptops out there. So if you like something larger but high quality, this is definitely something worth taking a look at. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis, and Handheld Obsession. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.